What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you're having a great day. Now that we have set up pretty much everything that we need, I want to start off building our resources. So if you're interested in supporting the channel and you want me to continue on creating tutorials, I have created a Patreon where you could get subscriptions and you will get benefits such as a private Discord group where we could help each other out. It's pretty difficult to maintain all the questions that I'm getting through Instagram and YouTube and even though I'm trying my hardest to respond to all of you guys, the private group on Discord will be very beneficial for you since it's a community where we could all help each other out. Whenever I write an application, I usually write some stuff out that might be useful during the buildup of the application. If we brainstorm a bit about the application that we're going to create, we obviously have books since we're going to create a bookstore. So let me add some comments over here. So a book belongs to an author, right? So we need an author's resource. So what more? We have a user that creates books. So where do we start with? Let's think about that for a second. We can start off with a user's table since the books are not implemented. A book has a lot of different relationships, which makes it a bit more complicated to start there. On the other hand, we have authors. An author does not need a book to start with. So, in my opinion, we need to start off by creating the authors and then the books. Right now, we are finally ready to write some code. And since we already have everything set up, I want to start off creating a model and set up our database. So let's hop to the CLI. So I turn and in here, so inside our bookstore directory, let's write down PHP artisan make me a model. And a pretty cool flag that I haven't talked about on this channel is the dash. So space dash a, which will create a model, database migration, factory, and a controller for us. I also want to add another flag, which is the space dash r flag. And this will make a resource controller. And this is pretty important since we're going to create a rest verb from the beginning. So we need to give our model a name. So let's say space author. Hit enter. And as you can see, our model factory, migration, seeder, and controller has been created. The issue that we have right now is, well, let's hop to Visual Studio Code and let's open our controller, is that our controller is singular. And this is not the best practice to use for a controller. So let's open it and let's change the class name to authors controller and let's rename the file. So let's say authors controller, so plural. For now, we don't need the author's controller. So let's save it and close it off. And let's actually get rid of the two comments as well. We are ready to set up our database migration right now. What we could do is to open our database folder, migrations, and we need a last migration because it's the last created migration. Let's open it. And right here, we have a schema where we're going to create the author's table. I want to keep it very simple right here. We do need an ID and in between an ID and timestamp, let's add a new column. So table, let's give it a string and the name is name. So the author's name, the auto increment ID will come from Laravel itself and the timestamps as well. So we don't need to touch anything else. So let's save it. Let's close it off. The last thing that I want to do is to open our author model. So let's do that. And right below our use factory, Let's say protected variable fillable is array and we only want to pass in the name. Adding the protected fillable will make sure that we can add the name when we use a create method on our eloquent quest since it's mass assignable right now. So let's save it and let's close it off. And I think that we're ready to migrate our database. So let's open iTerm. Let's write down PHP artisan migrate. Let's hit enter. And as you could see, the author's table has been migrated. A couple minutes ago, we also pulled in a factory, as you could see right here. So a factory has been created. And what I want to do is to use that to add some test data. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Inside our database folder, we have a factories folder and let's open the author factory. Inside the definition array that we have right here, that's being returned. We can add a complete list of attributes that we want to generate with our factory. In our case, since the ID and timestamps will be auto created, we only need to say that our name, so in single quotes, 
is equal to this, the faker class, name. Now the faker package that we're calling right here can be used to generate fake data for emails, phone numbers, addresses, names, and way more. So it's pretty cool. In order to call our factory, so our authors factory, in order to call our factory, we need to have a database seeder. And as we can see in the CLI, the seeder has been created as well. Right here, you can see a folder called seeders. Let's open the seeders folder. And in here, you can see two files. We have the author seeder and the database seeder. We need to start off with the database seeder.php file. So let's do that. And let's get rid of the comment that we have. Inside the run method, which is the only method that we have right here, we need to call the author seeder that we have. So let's say this, call it. And inside the parentheses, let's say author seeder, colon, colon, class. We're not done yet. Let's save it first, because we need to open the author seeder. And we need to do something inside the run method of the author seeder as well. First, we need to call the model that we want to associate our author seeder with. So obviously, that's the author model. So let's say backslash app backslash models backslash author colon colon. Then we need to call the factory model. So let's say factory parentheses, which accepts one param. The param is basically the number of rows you want to create. So in our case, let's just say that we want five authors. And in order to create the rows, we need to perform an access operator on the factory model and call the create method. Some of you guys might probably think, why are you adding the entire path inside the run method? We could pull it in inside the use statement as well, but since we're only going to use it once, we could write the entire path inside our run model. Let's save it. And we're ready to perform a migration and seed in our command. So let's hop to the CLI. And let's write down php artisan migrate space double dash seed. Let's hit enter. And right now we're having an error message. So let's go back and let's see what's going wrong right here. So start off with the authors factory. I think I didn't save the file. So let's do that. Let's go back to iTerm. And if I perform the same command again, you can see that our database has been seeded. Now to double test it, let's go to MySQL. Let's say select everything from the tables that we just created called authors. Let's hit enter. And we added five authors in our database. The data that I have on my screen right now will definitely be different than yours, since these are all randomly generated. Now that we're done with the database and migration, we are ready to set up our routes. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's close off the author's factory and both seeders. Right under the route that we created right here, let's create a new route. So whenever you want to pull in one specific author, your endpoint will be author forward slash the specific author ID. So let me add that. This is the route for one specific author. So what we did in the previous episode was showing data through Postman. If you want to show data in your UI, you need to make sure that you reference your authors controller, just like we used inside the web.php file. We're not going to create a route outside of our route. That's a mistake on me because we created a group route in the last episode. And the biggest advantage is the fact that we can make sure that all routes in the group are going through the auth colon API middleware. It's also good to define your API version, what we did, so the version one, and this will be added inside every route that we need. So let me show that to you. Right outside of our second route, let's say route, colon, colon, get. And first we need to pass in the path, so the endpoint. So let's say forward slash author, forward slash curly braces, author. Then we need to define the controller where we want to associate our author with. So let's say brackets, authors, controller, colon, colon, class. And we can define the method. So let's say comma, space, single quotes, show. Now the show method that we have right here has been made when we created our model since we added a resource flag to it. So let's open it. Let's go up and in our controller, we have the index, create, store, and the show method. So let me save API.php. 
Well, I actually can see that I made a typo right there because we want to go to authors. Let's go back to Postman. And if we create a new route, we need to add our bearer token and all the other data that we have again. So what we could do is to click on test request and let's say duplicate. Let's rename it to author. And we actually don't need the test request anymore. Let's change the endpoint to forward slash API, forward slash v1, forward slash authors, forward slash one. So the one represents the author with ID number one. So let's click on send. The body is empty, but the return status that we have right here is 200. So it is going right, but something is also going wrong. So pause the video. Think about it for a second why there are no authors returned back, even though we created five authors through the factory. If we go to our api.php file right here, you can see they're recalling the show method inside the authors controller. So let's go there. And as you could see, our method is empty. So we're actually not returning anything. So what we could do is to test it out. So let's say return single quotes test author save it go back to postman send it and as you could see test author has been printed out or to even make this better we could say return the author object that we have as a param save it go back to postman and let's send it one more time and as you could see right here we pulled in all information where id of an author is number one let me go over the flow one more time. Inside the request URI, we're saying that we want to search through all authors and find me an author where the ID is number one. Then inside the route, so api.php, we're defining a route to forward slash authors forward slash a specific ID, a random ID or whatever, search through it, and then go to the show method inside the authors controller and send anything that's returned back to the user. In the video where I talked about adhering the JSON API specification, I showed you that attributes, data, and types are very important. And to be honest, that's the actual structure that I want to teach you before we get used to other stuff or the wrong stuff. So the first thing that I want to do is to show you the simple way, which is not completely correct, but it's good to start with. First things first, let's get rid of the author object and let's return a response, access operator, JSON. Inside the JSON method, let's add an array, so brackets. And in here, we need to create a data member that will contain the resource object data that represents our model. Let's say in single quotes, data is equal to another set of brackets. We can set up the way we want to see data inside Postman. So first, let's grab the ID from the author object. So author ID, comma, we can define a new type, which is a string of authors. For the name and timestamps, it's best practice to place these right inside attribute members. And in order to do that, we need to create an array inside the data array. So let's say comma, attributes is equal to an array. And in here, we can say that a name is equal to the author name. And let's do the same thing for the created at and updated at. So created underscore at is equal to author created underscore at. Updated underscore at is equal to author updated underscore at. All right, let's save it. Let's go to Postman, send it. And well, you can see that data has been added, but let me restart my Postman for a second because I don't like the way it has been printed out. All right, this is the pretty way. I don't know why it just didn't work, but it does right now. But as you can see, we have data, which we defined ourselves. We have the ID type. We added attributes. So an attribute array ourselves with a name, created that and updated that. This is not it. And this is mostly step number one. The best way to do this is to create an API resource. So we could easily define how you want to transform our models into API resources. So let's create a resource. Let's go to the CLI. Let's write down PHP artisan, make me a resource called authors resource. Let's hit enter. 
and our resource has been created successfully. So let's open Visual Studio Code. And right inside our app folder, we have a new folder called resources. And there's a file in here called authors resources. So let's open it. You can see that it generates a two array method right here, which takes one param and that's the request object. And it needs to return an array. If we go back to our authors controller, let's copy everything that's inside the data. So let's copy this part. So the ID to the updated that remove everything inside the return value add a set of brackets and let's end it off with a semicolon in here. Let's paste it. Now, the reason why I don't copy the data member is because it will be automatically created with a two array method. You can see that we don't have the author anymore. This needs to be changed to this, which will refer to the request. So let's do that everywhere. Save it. Go back to the authors controller. And obviously we don't need to return this again. So let's get rid of it. And we don't need the two brackets. All right. What we need to do right now is to refer to our authors resource that we just created. And before we do that, we obviously need to pull it in. So let's go at the top of our page. Let's say use app backslash HTTP backslash resources backslash authors resource. Now let's go back to the show method and let's return a new instance of the authors resource. We need to pass in the author because the authors resource accepts a request. So let's say author and let me actually save all files. All right, let's go back to Postman. Let's click on send. And as you could see, the same information has been printed out on our screen, but we clearly cleaned up our code. Now, before I wrap up the video, I want to show you one more thing that's important to remember. If we go back to our author's resource, you can see that we're passing in the ID of an int. You can see that we're passing in the ID as an integer because it's pulling in the ID, which is an integer from the database. If we open Postman one more time, you can see that the ID is an integer as well. But according to the JSON API specification, IDs must be a string. Now, in order to change this up, let's go right in front of the keyword this. Let's add a set of parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we can define the data type. So in our case, let's just say string. Save it. Go back to Postman. Click on send one more time and we have converted our ID to a string. In the next video, I want to dive into research collections. And with that being said, this was it for this video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.